Three scientists are shown walking towards the beach at the beginning of the film. This story about the dead giant will be told to us by one of Stephen's men. The day before yesterday, there was a massive storm in the sea. As a result, a dead giant washed up on the beach, and the fishermen were taken aback when they saw the giant. They notify the police, but no one believes them. People simply have giant stories to share as they visit the beach. The scientist chooses to go to the beach on their own. They were observing the enormous figure in front of them. They have heard many times about it. There were a lot of people who came to see the giant. None was touching him. Everyone was scared of him. Stephen and his men estimate his weight to be around 80 tons. Stephen claims that assuming a giant's age is extremely difficult. Stephen says while seeing his nose and eyes, he is a young giant. The scientists were researching while standing near the giant's body. During this, Stephen goes near that giant's hand. It was looking like a pond. His hand was so big that it appears to be a pond after the water collects in it. Small fishes were swimming in it. Stephen says, the most shocking thing, more than the size of the giant, is that these giants still exist. They compare the people standing on the beach with the giant. They are in complete copies of the giant. Stephen was shocked after seeing them. Meanwhile, his colleague goes upside the giant. She informs the people present that he is safe. Hearing it, they all get on the body of the giant. They become happy after doing this. Someone was having a good time bouncing on the giant's body. Stephen doesn't touch it, not even goes on it. On the other hand, his colleagues were making notes about the giant. The number of people who played with the giant was dwindling over time. Because everyone was going to their homes. Stephen again comes here after three days. His interest has enhanced in that giant. He claims, he is not facing any problem while keeping an eye on the monster. The giant seemed to be more alive than the people around him. He notices some kids were sliding on the giant. Some people were preparing to cut this giant. He decides to stop late near the giant. So there will be none near giant. Coming near the giant, he notices that giant is decaying. His body parts were looking strange. He notices a girl on that giant's ear. She was using the giant's ear as a chair. Steven notices the giant's youthful look is disappearing. Now, he is not looking young. He indicates for staying for a long time in the sea. His tissues were damaged. Due to it, his body was damaged. Steven notices an insect on that giant's face. It was going inside his mouth. Steven was thinking the giant will be decayed before the insect arrives. Steven goes in the giant with courage. After getting on the chest of the giant, he was seeing giant's arm. It was totally decayed. The other parts were being eaten by the insects and birds. Here, a weird thing covers his eyes. It was giving a pawn's look to his eyes. Steven thinks while seeing his shadow in his eyes, the pain being decayed is less than the pain which the loneliness gave him. Then he leaves. The next day, Steven sees the giant's arms and legs were decayed. Now he was staring at his body. The giant's body was being insulted. There was none other than the humans who were insulting him. Even the giant was also a human-like creature. Reaching the enormous creature the following day, he discovers that the giant has likewise had his head removed. The giant is being eaten by birds and insects. Without a head, his body wasn't looking like humans. With it, Stephen's relationship with the giant deteriorated. That was made by the dead body, then he didn't come to the beach for some days. After some weeks, when he comes to the beach, seeing it, he gets shocked. The giant is completely depleted. There is only left the decayed gird of the giant, now they all lose interest in the giant. The people forget the entry of the giant after some months. There were the different parts of the giant as decoration pieces everywhere. One day, while cycling, Stephen notices the skull of the giant in the ground. He believes that if he searches, he will also find the eyes and nose bones. According to Stephen, the decoration pieces were well made by the giant's bones than the memories that are in Stephen's mind. Some of the body parts of the giant were also placed in the circus. The scientist says the one who has seen the giant. They consider him the monster who was dead for him. The giant was still alive. In his dreams, he frequently sees the giant departing his city to go back to the sea. He was collecting his body parts from the city. This movie gives us a deep message. How does a human enter other people's lives and leave an impression on them? He teaches the people and learns from the people. When he leaves the world, the people forget him. Even days, months and years passed, none remembers him. In the same way, we saw in this movie, how a giant arrived and attract others. Then something happened, and no one remembers him after days, months and years have passed. Actually, this is the bitter truth of human life. The people remember a human till he remains alive. If the human dies after some days, the people forget him. Now I will explain the Ice Age movie. A couple is shown at the start of the movie. They were shifted into a new apartment. The man named Rogue is shown bringing some things in his house. His wife Gail was setting the things in the house. Gail notices an old fridge in the new apartment. The landlord has left this in this house. Gail was worried about the fridge. There is something amazing in the old technology. On it, Gail says while taunting yes, this ugly motor is on it. She wants to set the new fridge, but Rouge couldn't afford the new fridge. 
He barely takes the ice out of the freezer and places it in his drink. They sit together and celebrate their house's happiness. After taking a sip of the drink, he sees a structure in the drink. When he realizes that it is an animal, he didn't believe his eyes. He shows Gale the ice cube and asks, are you seeing anything in it? Gale immediately brings the magnifying glass. They notice a small creature frozen in the ice cube. They were shocked and confused after seeing the creature. It was so small. They notice this small creature is Hunt. They notice spears in its body. They were more shocked after seeing it. Gale immediately takes out all the ice cubes from the fridge. Here, it is revealed a middle-aged civilization is working inside the fridge. The time was passing speedily in the fridge. One second is equivalent to one week in the fridge. The husband-wife was shocked seeing this. They were thinking, how is this possible? The citizens were also staring at them. They were small. That's why they were considering them a giant. Even then, they have no problem with them. After some time, Rogue buries that creature in his house's plant. The small creature they find from the ice cube. Gale again makes fun of him. Opening the fridge, they notice the city is changed into industrial age from the middle, in a short time. Because they were far from the fridge for a short time. But the centuries passed in the city. There were huge buildings made in the city. Rogue was sad seeing all this. He was missing the time. They saw in the start. What do they consider them? Are they considering them God? Meanwhile, they see the two construction workers while talking in the freezer. We see those insane giants every day, they said. We're sick of seeing the broccoli in Gale's teeth. While seeing the industrial community change into the modern community, the buildings there were changed into the superstructure. With it, they see the small flying. Rogue mistook them for planes, and they were witnessing the passage of time. Rogue was surprised and thinks if it is similar to our world, what will come after this modern era? In the meantime, they notice a lightning object nearby. Rogue gets shocked, what is it? He moves near to see it. Then he falls at a far distance with a hard jerk. Gale moves to him to help him. She notices that his face is scorched. They notice that it was a launcher. The war was going on when they go near it. Everything was finished there. They close the freezer because they didn't want to escalate the conflict. Later, they order pizza and enjoy their meal. Now almost one hour has passed. They haven't seen the freezer. Is the war over or not? Rogue says we have to open the fridge again. This time, they were scared. They were scared of seeing everything destroyed. They get astonished after opening the fridge. The war is over, and the small people have reclaimed everything. They also notice the small flying cars there. They glisten like pearls in the city. They compare this with their world. It was a futuristic world, with sky-talking buildings, giving it a nice appearance. Then the city changes into a pyramid. Many lines were connected with it. Rogue and Gale assume that everyone lived in the pyramid. The pyramid structure starts absorbing all the city in it. It blasts while changing into a huge energy wall. Due to it, the silver sparks spread in their whole kitchen. They were staring at it. They were considering it a part of the fantasy world. The sparks were looking like fireflies. Later, the sparks congregate and return to the freezer. Everything vanished in an instant. They were confused about it. Gale thought everything had vanished, whereas Rogue still held out hope that they would show up. All of this actually shows that the world has been removed. Rogue turns the fridge off and they hug each other. They saw humanity's sketch in a few hours and observe the past, future, and present. The couple resumes their normal lives the following morning. They still have some questions regarding yesterday in their mind. They again see the freezer in suspense. When the small humans return, they were eating the dinosaur's meat. They were running away from the dinosaur. It means now the start of humanity is shown. This film also concludes with a shot of this couple. They were once again preoccupied with viewing the animals in their natural habitat. This film depicts the beginning, evolution, and end of the world. The human journey from natural habitat to the modern age is very well explained. The fridge in this story represents mankind's concept. The couple shows the behavior of humans. When the war begins in the fridge, the fridge is turned off. They were preoccupied with themselves. This demonstrates humanity's disregard for the environment. Finally, the appearance of life in the face of Powerball represents the end of humanity. This film also comes to an end here.